count us in? What language are you going to count us in? Um, Niana, we count in usually in Hebrew in the yeah. studio. That'd be a bad choice today. I only have one language. <laughs> can, you, can you count in German? Yeah. I can't. Can you? Fünf, vier, drei, zwei. Eins. I'm doing it backwards, so. Okay, okay, you count us. You do it in German. Do it in German. <laughs> Fünf, vier, drei, zwei, eins, los. <laughs> Where my mom's, where my mom's at Where my mom's wearing thongs, hitting bongs at Raising kids, cleaning shits, need a long nap Where my mom's, where my mom's, where my mom's at Where my mom's at podcast With Christina P Auch meine Liebe. <laughs> Auch mein Herz. Auch oh, Schatzi. <laughs> Hauptschmerz, was it? Listen. <laughs> you guys don't even know what you have today. I, I've closed down the studio, but I reopened it for my guest today because we have with us the actual Prince of Germany, Jordan Prince, all the way from Germany. I, I, I really appreciate that you moved everything around so I could be here today. That's I'm, really cool. I absolutely love what you're up to. Um First of all, if you don't not familiar with him, I featured him because his TikTok page. You absolutely enthralled me. <clears throat> I have to tell you how bonkers it is that you came into that because I have I have you and your shows like so disconnected from anything that I'm doing over there, <laughs> and then to get in contact with you just by the chance that you have German family, yeah, was like the craziest stroke of luck. Like, yeah, just that, wild. that's how it is, though, right? Yeah. Like, okay, so I found you on TikTok because so you're an American, you're raised in the South. Mm -hmm. So we're, tell us the story because it's so fun. I mean, it's it's funny. It's like I yeah, I was born in Mississippi. I have one brother. Parents are still together. That's very rare. <laughs> That's rare, yeah. And then uh, my dad moved us around a little bit for work. Mm -hmm. Not a lot during like middle school and high school, but then right at the tail end, we moved to when my, when my brother moved out to do his own thing. Then we three moved down to uh, New Orleans, mm -hmm. and then I was there for a long time for years. I went to school there, and then I met a German girl there. Okay. And then that's what brought me to Munich in the first place. Like we, she's a little older, so she graduated before me. And then when I graduated, I went to Germany and stayed there. Wow. Okay. So she's yeah. from what part of, or you said Munich? Yeah. I mean, she, Munich. she would say she's from Munich, but she was born in this funny, and there's a lot of, lot to talk about with this little town, but at the very Southern tip of Germany, there's a town called Oberstdorf. Okay. And Oberstdorf. it's literally like in the Alps. And it's a really popular touristy area of Germany where everyone from like Switzerland and Austria and whatever come to ski mm. and snowboard. And she's from this little tiny uh, town where terrible things happen around Christmas time. But like yes. the Krampus and stuff. Well, they, I love that. I talk about it on your mom's house and my husband. It's horrifying. And they don't believe me. I'm like, you guys, this is like. No, no, it's a real, it's like an epidemic. Yeah, it's, it's, it's terrifying. Torture. So, but, but, so we'll get into it. But what I love about you is that you represent, I think, first of all, you're doing a lot for like making fun of German people and the German culture <clears throat> because we all know there's been one thing they've kind of been known for. <laughs> and it's nice yeah. that we're getting away from, like they've yeah. been punished and, and it was a horrific thing. Thing, but like yeah it's time but for a modern that. german has nothing to do with that yeah you know it's time to move on it's all you know it's the same as it's like gen zers and millennial kids and like people who are into i don't know uh like billy eilish just like anybody else yeah so i think it's easy to there's a lot way easier things to mock them for than yes. their ancestors <laughs> well because it's such a my grandmother was german and so when i saw your tiktoks i related to so much of the um how do you say like the rigidness you know, like yeah. you wake up in the I aufgestanden when I stand up in the morning. I'm like, no, you you don't aufgestanden. You don't stand up. You just wake up, you dumb bitch. And then she you was sit always up, you cry, you cry, <laughs> you <Yeah>. beg <laughs> for more. Yeah, and she would wake up every morning at five a.m. and then I walk to the mall, which was like five God. miles away in her sixties. And then I come home, I bake mm -hmm. five cakes, I pull down all the lemons off the trees, and I bake. <laughs> she makes like a lemon yeah, tart. Yeah, I hate the fucking lemon torta and and the yeah. lemonade and all this shit. And then you have to open the window for fresh air, fresh air, yeah. oh, fresh yeah. air. I heard this my whole life. And it's a cure for everything, that fresh air. You oh, know, of it's course, like, fresh there's air. There's no, <laughs> if you get like, <laughs> you, you would get COVID or even, or like if you get like a venereal disease, it's like, well, let's freshen the, let's open the windows, let's freshen the air. <laughs> You know, get a scarf, drink some tea, herbal tea. Herbal tea. And that's it. Otherwise, you're a big old pussy and yeah. you can't handle it, you know. No yeah. medicine. Tea is the cure for everything. One time, like two years into living there, I was cycling down a hill on a sunny day to go to a beer garden. And I stood up, stood up on the handles going down. I'm a big guy. 
And I had just bought this bike. It was a used bike and the handlebar where it held like split. It, mm. I, it was just broken. I didn't know. And it split. And I went oh, cascading over the handlebars and smashed Fuck. my shin on the pavement and actually peeled it open. And I, thank God, was in Germany. The whole thing, like I had to get stitches, oh. ambulance, hospital. It was 15 euros, which that's, that's the plus, right? Wow. I'm sitting in the hospital. I've got bandages on every finger, on my knees, on my face. I've got stitches in the thing here. And the, at the end, the doctor was like, okay, I think you're, you're ready to go home. And I was like, do I, do I go to a different counter for prescription? Like, I thought maybe they're going to give me one Vicodin yeah. or something, just like one thing for the day. He was like, no, no, you can get ibuprofen at any of the stores uh, nearby. <laughs> and I was like, oh, what? <laughs> it was just falling apart. Like, why? <laughs> Am I not yeah. punished enough, you know? Yeah. But that's how they think. It's just like, no, why would you take hard drugs, you idiot? Hard drugs, which is yeah. hilarious. The lady yeah. stitching me leaned over and was like, you didn't wear a helmet, did you? And I was like, no. She goes, <laughs> <laughs> She was so mad. Like punishing you? Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. Like, I'm already here. Yeah, and they're very open to telling you things that oh, I yeah. think Americans, and I think Americans don't There's really, no filter. Nine. <laughs> they're very straightforward. Like, you look like you're getting a little fat. Like, they tell oh, yeah. you. Oh, yeah, yeah, Same yeah. with Hungarians. When I go back to Hungary, they'll just tell you, straight, like, you're too pale. You look terrible. <laughs> you should go, you're too fat. You're too this. You're too that. It's, it's yeah, so it's, fucking there's, a, there's like a line that they, most people know not to cross, but the older people, they don't, they, there is no <laughs> line. There is no line for them. It's just like, oh, you, yeah, you're getting fat. Yeah, should do, do more sport. You should make more, more sport. sport. Making sport. So, so what we also I haven't mentioned yet is that because you've been making fun of the Germans, you're this fish out of water. Is that they really like it, and <laughs> yeah, you've become I'm, like a, I'm as surprised as anyone. Else. It's banana. Like you become a German stand-up phenomenon, and he's touring <laughs> in Germany. <laughs> Just making fun of them, and it's it is a it's a wonderful niche and like a wonderful way for you to create a career for yourself wherever you were. Like you were there. Talk about like luck too. I mean, there's no there was no plan for that. You know, like who's gonna say I'm gonna make fun of a specific group of people professionally? You know, <laughs> like what? What? And on like online, it's pretty much the only. I've tried like varying the content a little bit here and there to try things out, and sometimes it does okay but usually it's not the same like traction as what people want to see from like certain jokes um but on but on stage at least to have the freedom there because they they've already paid the ticket they they are there to to laugh yeah so then i do have more freedom there to like like the the shows i did um the show i did in january i was able to like have a whole section about Germans because that's what they want to see, but lead into it with like, here's a little bit of life story. Here's a little bit of like, you know, insecurities, a little bit of like New Orleans time, my, you know, journeys in Europe before. And that was a lot more fun too. For oh me. yeah. Well, they want to get to know this weirdo that landed yeah. in their <laughs> land and is now making fun of them. Let's show some of Jordan's videos because this is so funny. It's okay. Let's do the, the German eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> just like this is the minimum so whenever you're in germany if you're on like the public transport or whatever right don't mm -hmm. you find that they just like oh anywhere mad Any, and dog you people would argue and say it's more bavaria and maybe it is <laughs> i've had it everywhere in germany <laughs> and, and the thing is like they don't know that they do it <laughs> They don't know that they're doing it. And that's crazy to me that they don't even see it. I've had really good, close friends. And I've, I've like put the staring thing into some sort of content or some paperwork and had them like review it for something. And they go like, uh, uh, staring? No, yeah, what's staring? staring? What are you talking about? I was yeah. like, you don't, you've done it. I was like, you're part of the problem here. It's, you literally, you like sit in a train and you look up and usually it's an older person. Yeah, and, and, like... the, and it's just like this <laughs> curiosity, but it's really like a, dead eye contact stare and you're, you think like you have ketchup or blood or you're on uh, fire or something they just don't they don't and they don't see it no because they're you're all like, doing it to each other here yeah. play oh you have to be watching this you guys should watch this on youtube here's this is normal people avoiding eye contact which is us <laughs> <laughs> so true God, they I love just, a good filter. <laughs> right. It's so good because your skin looks flawless. It looks so good there. <laughs> Eyes so blue. Yeah, Hungarians do it too. It might just be like that part of Europe. Hungarians do it too? Yeah. Well, I wonder older if it's people. just this, yeah, this older European thing. I don't know. But even for, I've had friends 
or I do have friends in my 30s who have caught them doing it. Just like <laughs> sitting and like eating lunch outside somewhere and just watching a person, <laughs> you know, and not even like, a you know, you might see someone you think looks a certain way, ugly, pretty, whatever, and you go like, oh. Yeah, mm-hmm. you just a glance, but there's just a glance. So you don't menacing. offend them. You don't want them to see you doing it. Yeah, they have, it, yeah. <laughs> it's just like if you see them, good for you. <laughs> you know, here's a quarter. <laughs> they're so, um, it's they're crazy. so, and they're so precise too. Mm. Look mm-hmm. at let's look at this German contest they having. They, this is a show. This is something you sent me, which is so funny. Like, this is the kind of show uh, they no, do. No, I think you. No, did, oh, I, did send I send this to you? I think you sent this to me. I mean, this is literally a game show <laughs> where they have to cut something precisely in half. So this man is cutting a pretzel. How which, bananas is that? Yeah. Well, how safe is your society? Like, how boring oh. is your everyday oh. life? There is no, there is no bill coming in that person's mailbox <laughs> that they're sweating. There is no kid getting in fights at school. No, there's no uncle. Worried. You know, Uncle Joey's doing drugs again. No, no. Uh-uh. what is that? So is that just because their society? So, and it's like good, for, and then good for him too. It's like right down oh, to, the, to the to the point four forty four or whatever. I don't, I don't know what. Like, Extremely accurate. That's amazingly accurate. And I love that <laughs> yeah. they have joy in the accuracy. Like that's, it's joy in the precision, joy in the accuracy. I, that's, you saying that makes me even happier that they are so kind about my jokes because it means there's some accuracy to them at least <laughs> because if there was not, if there was no truth, they wouldn't take it. Well, they're, they're wonderful rule followers. Um, oh, I wish I had this. Yeah, they are, they're very, Would very you play, um, Play the German neighbor in just one second, because this actually just happened to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to explain, set this clip up a little bit, because this is wild. I mean, this is a little exaggerated, of course, but like this is almost exactly what happened to a point that I, so I moved to a new house in the suburbs and just to get a bigger space. And like there is where you run into people who are caring way more about parking than, because <laughs> there's this like, it's it's a safe area. There's not a lot of crime. They have their, you know, their wealthy Bavarians. They have their their money. They have their home. So, like, all they have to worry about is the smallest, most minuscule, dumb, unimportant things. Yes. And I remember one day I was in my house and I heard the the bell and I opened the door and it was a, a neighbor and I'd seen him around, but I hadn't met him yet. I was like, oh, hi, nice to meet you. And he was really quiet and really stiff like this. And he was like, oh, yeah, English, yeah. Mm. Um, and <laughs> I didn't and... even think of it like that. It's like, um, and he basically told me that because of in his driveway, he has a caravan, and sometimes he takes that caravan out. Sometimes, yeah. So my car was like just oh. a little bit oh. in the way of where he could. Now the most fun thing about that is I moved it, <laughs> and he didn't back out with the caravan. <gasps> he just, if he wanted to leave, uh, it was just so if anxiety. he wanted to. Yeah, the preemptive. I stared at that window at him. <laughs> I was like trying to make his house catch on fire with my eyes for day. Like I've never hated someone so much in my life. Like you didn't even move it. You didn't need me to move it. I was so mad. Well, the audacity. Uh, I agree. Like it's it's one thing to hey, ca- I need to get my caravan. Would you mind? Yeah. Versus the preemptive chat that you're gonna have. And also, it's and he like, wasn't even nice. He wasn't like, oh, you know, um, are you gonna be there for a while? Because I think tomorrow around noon, I'm gonna need to back this out. Right. That, I would've been like, oh no no no. In the morning, we're gonna take it out. No problem. You know. Well, I lived in this neighborhood where it was a public street, right? We nobody. You don't own the street in front mm-hmm. of your house, the sidewalk. Mm-hmm. But they would be insistent that everybody parked in front of their own house. And yeah. if you parked in front of someone else's, they would like come and knock on your door. You're like, are you out of your mind? It's just a street, man. Yeah, it's, it's so crazy. You as long as everyone it. can get to their house in a reasonable space, I don't. I don't know. That but, to me, that's that's, that's just. But their ridiculous. attention to rules, like they genuinely thrive. Yeah, in it's it's what it's it's like their lifeblood is like living by a certain set of societal <laughs> and bureaucratic rules. They love it. I looked up the Google the Google reviews for the immigration office in Munich, and it has like half of one star. And the top com- the most liked comment was like, you know, for an immigration office, they sure don't speak any English. Oh. <laughs> I was like, I can't wait to get my visa renewed. <laughs> All right, so let's play this clip because this is like a story that happened. This is about the neighbor continuation. So this is like basically the second part, the second time this neighbor comes to you, right, with the caravan. I think so, yeah. This is so funny. 
Oh, ja, hallo, servus, I'm your Nachbar. Uh, hi, yeah, we've, we've met before, how are you? Um, I have a kurze Frage, I have a small question about your parking. So we're just breezing right past the greeting. Uh, what about this? Uh, I believe uh, I have told you before that uh, sometimes I like to remove my camper van from my driveway and take it out. And this is why normally we are leaving our Sorry. car parked in a certain place. But we have noticed that there is a different car there today. And I am wondering if it is yours. <laughs> Oh, you're the camper van guy. Um, no, we just have the one car. Our car is over there, so I don't know who parked this car here. Mm. Uh, yeah, okay, but the last time you parked your car <laughs> oh, um, a few inches it's in so, the way, punishing. so we had to ask you to move it, remember? <laughs> yeah. And we did. Yeah, so um, naturally, my first <laughs> thought was that this new car must also be yours. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is a rental car. It has a brand name <laughs> on the side. This is a rental car. You know, did you rent genau. this car and then park it here where we cannot uh, remove our camper van? <laughs> no. Mm. All is clear. Are you sure? Yeah, like I said, that's our <laughs> only car. Really it's, accurate it's parked over there. I remember our last conversation. <sighs> I don't park in your precious spot anymore. <laughs> this rental car must just be from someone else. Have you asked any of the other neighbors? Oh mm -hmm. my God, this is so All German. right, then I would probably, I would probably do that then. Oh, oh. Also, oh. danke. Also, danke. <laughs> so <laughs> accurate. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. He blocked it off with a traffic <gasps> Who did that? cone. Oh. I had to, I had to uh, like literally take a picture of it because he, he actually did that. He actually blocked. <laughs> I can't believe this guy, dude. He that that was the true story. <laughs> the, the next time he bothered us, there was a it was like you know sixth, like a branded rental car, in the in the spot that we don't park in anymore. <laughs> and he came out again and was like, "Did you happen to maybe t rent a car and leave it here by accident?" <laughs> so convinced. I was like, "No, is. our car. We have one car. It's right." It was like in our driveway this time. Yeah. We don't want to mess with it anymore. Yeah. And he's like, okay. He's like, maybe someone else in your house? You know? I was like, no, 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 this is it. This is us. This is all we have. Uh, and then he, then a few hours later, we left. We came back. The rental car was gone. So he probably downloaded the app and moved it himself, we're <gasps> guessing. And then put traffic cones wow. in front on a public street. Yeah. That's bonkers. Yeah. That's really too much. Yeah. but That's you're... a good example of like the, the Bavarians. <laughs> yeah. They're very, my dad was born in Bavaria. That's funny. Oh, yeah. So I've actually been there to um, ah. Altenmark. When was the last time you were in Germany? Oh my gosh. Um, Berlin in like 03 or something. And I would love oh, to go I back. I thought, you, well, I thought you've toured since then at least. Yes. But only in um, like London and in Middle East and okay. places like that. But I would love to. Yeah. I want to go to Berlin. I like it there. I'm sure you would so do very well in Berlin. Much. Come on. Yeah. I love it. So, but this is so funny. Why are they so, but why do you think it is that they love order? Because it really is specific to the Germans. I know the Hungarians aren't like that. The British kind of, the English sure. like it, but they just, they thrive in boundaries and yeah. precision. There and must be some cultural aspect to it. Actually, that might be a good way to lead into this gift I have for you. This, oh, this I can't one. wait. What did you bring Why me? They, well, there's two. There's a two-parter. One is a gift for you. One is the one thing I want to show you. Oh, my gosh. So <gasps> talking about why they like rules so much, this is this is for you here. This is a, this a very, very popular children's book <laughs> in Germany called the Struvo Peter. And it's literally like, I mean, my wife's dad, so many, so many people yes. um, grew up with this book. I grew up with this. Do you have I this? Know I know. I have this. this book. I have this. No I've already way. shown it to my children, and they are Does terrified. This, like, bring up your yes, nightmares. Of course. <laughs> you don't show this to your boys, do you? And it's like cut your fingers off if you suck them, right? For if real. You suck your for thumb. real. Like yeah. I've I've done it's videos about it, terrible. but for those who who um, don't this. know anything about it, like just like there's you know like lessons. It's lessons for kids to learn. <laughs> like very briefly, this girl <laughs> she plays with matches, and the lesson is she catches fire and dies. Mm -hmm. That's her ashes. Mm -hmm. the, t the kittens are crying pools of tears. That's real. That's actually happening in this children's nighttime story. Um, night, yeah, night. There's some pretty racist stuff in here, too. Um, and then the Ashen, we'll, the Peter, a lot the of, Ashen. A lot of old school stuff in here. What is it? Oh, here's one. Yeah, yeah. So here's another one. So this boy is here at home. He's a thumb sucker. Yep. And the mom is going to go out to the store and she says, now, don't suck your thumb while I'm gone. Mm -hmm. And he does. And then an adult stranger breaks into their home, a tailor, and slices his thumbs off forever. <laughs> 
That's how my dad got me to stop sucking my thumb. He told me this story. <laughs> he put like a pocket knife to your. To yeah, your he's like, I'm, the wicked witch is gonna come and and cut it off. He actually he told, told you me. that yeah, because he's he heard the same shit. Yeah, it's so uh, traumatic. And they're all like, I mean, this one like you know, this kid's like, I don't want to eat soup, so then he <laughs> dies. <laughs> but this, Thank you so much. Yeah, of well, course. one for each kid now. You know, they had to share one you still copy. Have the old copy. Of course. Oh man, no, I should have asked before. I wanted to surprise you with that. No, I love this. Um, but the Einmal. I have a feeling growing up with stories like this is. Oh, and also Krampus. I think that's Krampus also. Krampus is like a, terrifying. The kid culture, I think, is what makes them so rigid about behaving a certain way. I think you're right. It and must I, be part of it. But also, kids really love the gore and they like the violence. They thought it was funny. Yeah. You know, in the '60s, they were like. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because I read the Brothers Grimm to my right. children. Right, and Max and Moritz is another popular, uh, just like that. Yeah, you know, the original, they all die. <laughs> even Aschenputtel, the original Cinderella, mm. uh, one of the sisters cuts her foot off to fit the glass slipper oh and God. bleeds on the horse because oh the, the prince is like, I guess you're her. What lesson are you supposed to learn from that? <laughs> well, Just, children, whatever here's a it knife. takes <laughs> you know, like. to get him to love you, cut your foot off. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be yourself, kids. Don't ever be yourself. Don't ever just uh, find someone who loves you for who you no. are. Slice some dice. So Krampus, let's talk. So in Hungary, the story that I always heard growing up is, okay, so Saint Nicholas, Saint Nicholas, he comes actually on December 6th. This is not uh, Santa Claus. This is bullshit. And then, oh wait, what is it? Yeah, right? Six, the sixth is when you put your shoes out. Yeah, that's right. And you can either get candy if you're good <clears throat> Or lumps of coal, if you're bad. And then the devil comes to your house and he takes a switch and he beats you if you're bad. Oh, okay. And my uncle Pishta got the devil once because he was bad one year. And it literally a guy in the village dresses yeah. up as, this, as Satan and comes in with a branch and beats your child. I should have, I, you know, I should have sent you a couple of the photos from, from, from my wife's hometown because they have these... They, it, it is Krampus, but they call them Klausen there. Oh. And it's literally, it's it's so horrifying. And it's always horrifying. There is no time of being there where you're like, huh, I get it now. It's always like, I really hope they don't let them in. <laughs> like, you really always hope they don't open the door. But they're like these, you know, like blasted, hammered, drunk bachelor <laughs> dudes. They're like 19. Look, a, look this up. It's so They've funny. got like the, these big, furry... Like it's all real fur. They get like they skin the goats and the lambs and the cows. They put these big fur things with real horns, and they growl. They have to like audition to be one of them. They have to go in the woods and like do their most vicious, horrifying like scream. And if they pass that test, they can be in this you know basically a cult. Yeah. And then every December, every December sixth. Yeah, I mean it's yeah. This is kind of more what it looks like in uh, in the city. So they have these like very devilish looking masks and stuff. That's that very is terrifying. It is very terrifying. I mean, no matter which interpretation. And is this to deter the children from bad behavior in the month of December? Yeah, essentially. Right? Yeah, it's basically like Saint Nick is like you know Nicholas yeah. is uh, brings you know um, fruits and gifts and treats <laughs> and it's like are you being a good boy or being a good girl? And uh, in in my in my wife's hometown, the way that the the way that it would work with the village is that you know everyone knows who these people are going to be, <laughs> and they would say like. Um, hey, hey! This year, when you and your friends are doing it, um, you know, Anna took five yeah. euros out of her yeah. Oma's purse. Yeah. So come, we're gonna let you in and just come, come give her a little. Come mess with her, which is basically trauma because, yeah. like, yeah. imagine this girl's like eight, you know, and you have these monster like twenty year old dudes. Yes, with these, and you know, and these little kids don't know they're not real. Yeah, and they're like. <laughs> And they open the door and screaming, where are you? And then like, be a good girl. And it's hor it's horrifying. It's really scary. And like my wife has Stockholm syndrome because of that. Oh, I'm I mean, sure. Like I, I have called it that as a joke, but I legitimately believe it. Because every time it gets around the beginning of December, she's like, oh, you know, we, we should go to my parents' uh, house this, this, this weekend or, you know, whenever of the day of the week it is. And I always don't want to go. Because mm. I, I don't want to be, a, it's really scary. It's terrifying. Yeah, it's like a little exciting, depending where you are. If you, The thing is, that's also like the town gets so used to it that, you know, teenagers will go out in the street and run away from them. They'll go get drunk, you know, <gasps> and like let them chase them. They have like these big helmets and tiny little eyes, so they can't see so well anyway. So I think if you're used to it and you're 18, it's probably a lot of fun. But man, I've been captured and beaten by those dudes. Really? There was one funny story where... Our friend Sarah from New Orleans visited us, and I'll never forget this. Like we were in uh, in my brother in law's house, and he lives like in the center of this town, on the like in this pretty house, like right in like the town square. 
and everyone knows him. Like her family, they have a company in the town, and so everyone knows them as like local dudes. And of course, all of the monster bachelor dudes were like, oh, you know, they're, they, you know, they were the younger brother of like guys who went to school with him or their dad works with him. And so they all wanted to come like mess with him. So they, I remember one year we were there where you drink a lot, you eat a lot of like rolled side, the bread and oh, sausage and stuff. And stuff. it was like family and friends. And Sarah, our friend Sarah was there. And uh, one year they're banging on the door and he lets them in. <gasps> they come in and they make all their noise and they, they had this sticks, they had a, um, a se- this is a real severed chicken leg that was still kind of bloody. And he came into her drink and plopped it in her drink and said like, drink it. She's ah. like, no. <laughs> and he goes, okay. And then he drank it. <laughs> and then they took the helmets off and we had like, let's say an hour of peace. They, you know, they're just, at, at, that, at that point, it just looks like Robert Pattinson's Batman a bit, yeah. like the smeared Ugh. makeup and everything. And they drink, they drink like fish. But then when they put it back on, it's like they snap back into character. Oh, yeah. And I was there and I was making jokes with them and I thought, oh, the, the danger is over. The helmets came back on and they just targeted me. And like four guys grabbed me by my shirt and my arm and dragged me. And my feet were like dragging down. I was like, guys, guys. And my friend Sarah goes, bye, Jordan. <laughs> I'll never forget like that tiny little, bye, Jordan. And they took me out and they hit me with sticks. They made me sing a song out in the sidewalk. And it was an accident, but one dude bent down to, to do something, like fix his shoe. And when he came up, his horn like scratched <gasps> my forehead. I had like a little trinkle of blood and like Ugh. switch marks. I was like, I don't want to be here anymore. Yeah. It's really a crazy it's, thing. They, and they're like, ha, 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 ha. Yeah, it's, so, it's such a severe culture. Yeah. I think like our, we're not used to it, you know? Like, I know, yeah. it's so brutal. Like in Hungary right now, so for Easter... <laughs> I don't know what the Germans do for Easter. There's no big bunnies. I don't think there's any. Big <laughs> oh, yeah. There's no joy. And, it's just and, Catholicism. <laughs> yeah. Well, you Google Hungarian um, Easter. It's like out in the, uh, not in Budapest, but like in the countryside. My dad would tell me that um, the boys would go. <laughs> see, okay. See them dousing girls. Oh, wow. So like they go to like door to door, I guess. And they knock on the door and they ask for the pretty girl that lives in the house. And if, the girl doesn't kiss them they douse them with water <laughs> no <laughs> or perfume like the girls give them a little bit of perfume is what my dad will always say yeah and then they just like they douse the, the village girls in water <laughs> that seems so fucked up <laughs> i know but this is like haha lol lols this is easter <laughs> it's negative four degrees out here <laughs> yeah yeah they're just oh looking, like a- <laughs> <laughs> look at that one <laughs> they're just beating a girl in the street yeah they're like, it's tradition. Watering of the girls for Easter. Your dad's like, this is my favorite part of this the year. Is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> teach these bitches a lesson. Yeah. This is Christica, lovely. go get water. Go get water for the villagers. <laughs> yeah. And my dad, like, for, I remember I went to his house for Easter and he's like, I made Easter, this is Easter meal. And it was like <laughs> ham with um, horseradish and mustard and like and two eggs, hard boiled. <laughs> <laughs> like this is disgusting. Like, That's this so is real. So gnarly. That's yeah. So real. And yeah. brot. Yeah, the bread. How was the cross. Hungarian bread? Because yeah. the German bread is legit. It's the, so actually, I grew up eating German bread because my dad preferred rye with no seeds. And there was this oh, yeah. place called Otto's German Deli in um, the valley where I grew up. I'm oh, sorry. No, that was a different place. German. It was just called German Cold Cuts. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> it existed up until two years ago or so. And that's where we go buy all the German it was treats. The kids from the story just sliced up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the bread with the rye with no seeds. The rolls are so good. Mm. The sausages crash. I mean, I love all of that. I grew up eating all if, of that like, stuff. If you're a meat eater and a bread eater, Germany is oh. like such a... I mean, the food is legit. Yeah. I, I mean, it is very, very... Bakeries are, you, are crazy good Are there. you just eating your way through Germany or are you like... I mean, I've doubled in weight since I've lived there. That's for <laughs> sure. Like, I'm going to have some sort of heart disease at like 35. <laughs> it's bonkers. And the beer too. The beer is the beer culture is nuts. Yeah, it's so funny. Like, do you know that Oktoberfest the beer is stronger than it is usually? No, instead of what twelve percent, it's what, like it's twenty. It, or it's uh, it's, it's already pretty, it's pretty good. high. And they um, it's funny because like I think there's like I don't know I'm probably getting this wrong, but six or seven you know main brewing companies that host all these tents at the at the Oktoberfest, and they brew significantly stronger than their normal bottled that you'd get at the stores oh it's uh, just a fresher like special beer for the occasion and all these americans and australians will come and oh, be like, fun. i can do it and it's a full <laughs> liter it's a full liter of extra strong like german beer 
and they will get black out here. <laughs> <laughs> like I have stepped over bodies. <laughs> <laughs> like girls just like sitting and vomit uh, with their girlfriend being like where's your we're like calling where's the uber you know yeah. like where are you <laughs> yeah just getting ripped dude. oh it's and the australians they're they man they the aussies take, can drink already as it, it is to, they take it to a new level yeah so you put the aussies in germany i imagine it's like oh my god yeah the yeah. and the british the british and the, the australians like Fuck there's yeah. no i've been to there's a lot of like pub like british style pubs in munich and i've been to a few with a couple of english friends of mine and i just can't keep up like i'm not i'm not huge into soccer i can i can get into a few games but um i'll go with a friend every now and then you know if you have a friend who's like super into it you can kind of mm -hmm. you know attach to the vibe a bit and i mean it's just like pint after pint after oh pint yeah after, on like a wednesday oh I'm yeah like, come on man this is wild like but so my dad would take me to alpine village for a october fest every year <laughs> and just like I would run this village and my dad would just get fucking ripped with his other Hungarian <laughs> friends and like this polka shit music. Oh you my God. know, like, what's this one? I'm behind, it's good. I mean, they they da, can da, really da, drink, da, like, da. for him, it's probably a lot more schnapps too, right? Like more vodka. Schnapps. And stuff. <clears throat> I hate schnapps, but yes, schnapps is. Germans like, love some schnapps. They love their some, schnapps. Some schnapps. <laughs> <laughs> they should love their schnapps. <laughs> and Sprudelwasser. You talk a lot about Sprudel. Yeah. Sprudelwasser. I think, I think Germany as a collective establishment would crumble without the existence of, of sprudelwasser <laughs> sparkling water like the ground beneath them would fall yes. like Armageddon movie or something Hungarians too it's called Ash, Ash, Ashvanvis and when you go to Hungary it's like Ashvanvis over regular water because it's like they have their mm. sparkling whatever mineral fount what the fuck I can't talk today I'm drunk I'm hungover <laughs> me too um, yeah yeah um, you know it's like so popular there like why drink regular water when you can drink water that has actual minerals in it right right Sprudel, is you, from I, the ground not I, uh, like mineral water I have been so into Martin Riese Oh, oh my God! The water sommelier. I'm of such course. a fan of this guy, Martin Riese. Like I, I, heard, I, funny enough, like I, I was living in Germany the first time I heard him on YMH, and like I didn't <laughs> put it together until years later that I was following him, and I was like, oh, that's the same guy yeah. that I heard years ago on the, on the show, and then I started like obsessively looking at everything he approved, <laughs> and I was like, okay, in Munich, I'm in, I'm in a pretty good spot, and then I like I did an impression of him. <laughs> and he very kindly like duetted it and approved. And I was like, uh, okay, all right, Martin, all right, cool. And Martin is like such an exemplary German because he's got he's the glasses, so like the perfect glasses, and his appearance is very, you know. And I love him to death. He's very, he's very Sweet. good at what he does. But the accent, oh, it's like the best. you can't, like you know. I think the first time I heard it, I thought he was putting it on. Yeah, I know. But then you you see in the videos, you're like, oh, this is just how he. Yeah, and I, I like how passionate he, he gets about it. He's right? so passionate. He's like yeah. Aquafina's trash. Like she's <laughs> yeah. so mad. Like Nest, like Nest. I started like uh, looking at all the waters I was drinking, like Dasani and Nestle true. and stuff. I was like, oh man, you're right. You don't feel like refreshed, and everything shouldn't say zero all the way down the bottle. And yeah, now like Fiji water, I'm like, oh now i get why you know yeah well that's why sprudelwasser and mineral like the ashwan v's it's like from the ground it's got yeah. minerals your body is made of those minerals so this is something <clears throat> also a big difference from living in the south to living in munich is uh just the the groundwater the tap water mm. is unbelievable wow like living in munich and especially when i visit um the horrible mountain town like <laughs> the water the water from the tap is actually from the mountains like oh, oh like drip down from the <clears throat> like snow literally or spring whatever. water from the alps and it's That's so nice. it's so refreshing it's so full of minerals and i just love how it tastes and feels and it's mm -hmm. like the best just natural tap water and then you go visit you know i visit my parents back in tennessee or now in georgia and they buy, have to buy the bottled waters or they have to use filters and it's like oh man right 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 i know it's or new orleans new orleans had like regular water boil advisories yeah we had that in they're austin like, they like brain eating amoebas and stuff in the water <laughs> i remember i literally i was in college and they were like please boil, don't drink it please boil your water before you touch it like before you bathe your child or whatever it was like oh my yeah. god austin too i'm, I'm surprised because new york city new yorkers swear by their tap water really and i'm like yeah i'm surprised too they're like no it's the best but it's they have clean. huge rats Ugh, dude that doesn't i know check out. it doesn't check out for me but they <laughs> swear by it they love their tap water and their education systems so what the fuck do i know they do have better education than, than the south oh for sure so let's can i play let's play the german um the beer holding contest this oh is yeah yeah such, is this just like an Oktoberfest thing i want to say or is this, if it's the one i'm thinking of where they're um, holding them it might just up. be like a, a just a funny like maybe an appeasement. Oh yeah, <laughs> right. 
Yeah. Germany's, this was on TV somewhere. Oh, for sure. The Germany's funny thing most is, it's, important the commentators are, are American. So I, I've been trying to figure out if this was Alexander held looks in oh, the yeah. States. So they're literally... But the beer's German. It's Bitburger. That's a German beer. I love Bitburger. Yeah. You're holding out a heavy-ass Stein of beer. Who can do it the longest? That's the full... That's like that... Yeah, that's such a big thing of beer. Oh, look at him go! <laughs> it's so fun. This is probably at one of those Bavarian villages in the States somewhere. Uh, I, where did this televise? Like, where? <laughs> I don't know, but I could watch this shit forever. I don't know why I like it. I would much prefer to watch this over most of it. I love the other hand in the pocket. It's so curved and tight. It's so awful. It's so hard. It's so... Because it looks easy, it is so hard. It's so painful. Look at that yeah, guy. He's just like, he's not even head down, much. not even shaking. The old guys have it locked. It's yeah. the younger guys that are shaking and Five moving their minutes. Yeah, dude. Because how heavy could a Stein be? Of, or it's not a Stein, it's a glass. Um, That's heavy. It's hard to say. It's like it, seven it, pounds. It, it definitely gets heavy pretty quick. <laughs> but I mean, I've never seen those competitions in real life because in Germany, they just drink them so fast. <laughs> they just, right? yeah. They just, I don't know. I've, I never... Like in New Orleans, yeah, you know, coming from there, I like to drink and I can take care of myself in terms of how much and when, you know, it's a, it's a party city. Yeah. But um, going to Munich, I realized like the beer culture is such a, a huge part of living there that I, I started, and maybe it's also getting older, but started just like, no, I'm good. You know, just occasionally, like, I'm, I'm all right. I don't need uh, two mass beers at lunch, you know, at this, like, with their meat salad, their wurst salat, you oh, know? Oh, yeah. It's like, I don't want to die today, you know? Because <laughs> the thing is, they'll drink all these beers and eat yes. this meat salad, and yes. then they will go make, they'll go make sports. Make sports and skiing You know, and I will house. not do that. <laughs> not as much as them, at least. Yeah, my father is on a steady beer and meat diet and he's fine he's almost 80 and yeah the gout flares up every now the and gout. then i know a lot of germans with gout of course because that's what they I know eat. like six like i could yeah. just name right now <laughs> yeah it's all processed meats mm -hmm. and um horseradish my, i don't think i've ever seen my dad eat a green vegetable like maybe like that butter leaf lettuce they like with like some vinegar <laughs> on it like that's <laughs> like whatever that yeah. german weird shit is like Oh, uh, no, oh I before did. I forget, I wanted to show you yeah, this. Please. This is this is another thing. This is really fun. Look so at my, these so shout out to my friend Moritz who bought me this as a as a nice gift. Do you know about the Struvel Hitler? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you might like uh, this one. No, but I am all ears. I Go got this for from, from Bert's online shop and uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yes. Um, so <laughs> they uh, <laughs> during so okay, <laughs> this is great. During uh, World War II. Oh the English gosh. came through and made a mockery of Germany's popular children's book. So it's a parody on the original Struvopita by Robert and Philip Spence, presented to them to the daily sketch War Relief Fund, which supplied wireless sets, games, and woolen comforts to our fighting services and clothing, bedding, boots, and food to air raid victims. So it was oh, wow. uh, to mock Hitler and the German youth during World War II. And it's Almost, ex I mean, like exactly the same book, except all the whining little complaining kids that die from playing with matches are all Hitler. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> are like Nazi soldiers. Let me see. Oh, that's Yeah, here's so like cool. little, you know, little child Hitler, like kicking his <laughs> chair back at the table. Hitler's like, I don't want to eat soup, you know? <laughs> He's going to die. Let's see dead Hitler. Is there a dead Hitler? Oh, um, there's plenty of dead Hitlers in here. <laughs> well, there, yeah, there's some um, fall falling back in the chair, hitting that's his head. Brilliant. It's that's really crazy. Brilliant. And like. The cover of this story, um, the original, is this kid with these crazy long fingernails mm -hmm. and this crazy hair that he didn't brush, and it's the same. And it's all of his fingers have been cut. That's blood shooting That's out of amazing. every finger, and his hair is all wacky. But yeah, I had to. I, I had love, to show you that. Thank you. What a treasure! Thank you. That's really wild. I right? feel like this should stay in YMH Studios in Bert's section. Definitely <laughs> next to the teacup. Or whatever. This looks like Edward Scissorhands. I think Tim it does. Burton it does. may have seen this. Yeah. I don't know if that's a more modern uh, uh, cover of it, but yeah. A Nazi storybook. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that insane? It is. I never, I had never heard of that. And I think that's such a funny insight to like, I didn't expect there to be humor like that back then. Neither did I, but it's, it's good propaganda actually. Totally. It's brilliant propaganda. And yeah. It also makes you realize how sensitive we are 
today. Right. Like, oh, it's a very different never. world. Yeah, but this is actually like really cool. I mean, imagine getting your hands on this as like a, a teenager, a German teenager. You're like, no fucking way. Dude. Yeah. Mocking your own uh, previous history. I think that's really, really cool. Yeah. Uh, every time someone comes into my like little studio at home, they always stop like, I'm sorry, what, 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 <laughs> what is that again? They're like, no, 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 it's not what you think. It's not what you think. Entschuldigung. <laughs> Wait, is that how you say it? I forget how you say it. Yeah, yeah. You Entschuldigung. Right. Entschuldigung. God, I remember so little from this Hitler getting eaten by dogs. <laughs> yeah. He like kicks a dog and the dog rips his leg off or whatever. So great. It's so silly. It's so, and, and uh, yeah, these Germans, the, their, their behaviors and their cultures. I, I've been very lucky in seeing that the jokes I'm making, that they're pretty receptive Yeah, to they it. like it. They you like know, it. Because I think, too, I, again, like they've been so pigeonholed in one part of their history. I think yeah. it's refreshing, and it's such a good service, actually, that you're doing to... Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> no, I think it is, because I... I and I, it's funny, because as, as a comedian, as you know, like people are so overly sensitive right now, but the truth is most of the time people like it when you make fun of them. I yeah. love it when people make fun of white girl shit. Like <laughs> I love it when black comedians make fun of white lady shit. Totally. I, I, it's just my favorite. If it's um, funny. Yeah. Then it's just funny. Yeah. Yeah. And it's cathartic. It's great that you can, as an outsider, but you love them. And I think that's yeah. really important to point out. I too. think they know that like, Obviously, if I didn't like Germany, you I wouldn't be there. Them. I wouldn't have stayed. And you wouldn't you have know? married a German woman and, right. and created this TikTok account that like points out the little idiosyncratic things that they don't yeah. see in themselves. No, you you love the culture as do I. Like, I mean, of course, the whole thing even you know the whole thing even started as just like I like in the pandemic I was just making videos about like little weird language uh, idioms and expressions yeah. they have that are so weird. Like if you translate some of them to English, it doesn't make any sense at all. They have one like "Hast du einen Vogel," which is like, "Do you have a bird?" And that means, "Are you crazy?" Oh, do you have yeah. a bird? You know, you and that's so left field for me. That I was like, "Oh, I'll do a video about that." And it was only until coming back to the states after doing a you know a series of those videos, and I was standing in a Walmart and looking at this huge row of all the different varieties of water. And like thinking about like 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 Martin kind of yeah. like a huge row of all these different cases and waters and stuff, and this German voice popped into my head like someone that I know who's like this character I do is the thoughts of one German and the accent of another, and I just kind of put them together. Oh, how that's who Johannes is. Yeah, Johannes is like a certain friend's accent and a certain it. friend's way of thinking because they're very it. very different people, but together it's it's Johannes, and this one person's way of thinking. Uh, came to me thinking about like all the plastic, all the waste, like yeah. no Sprudelwasser, no like name <laughs> brands that they're used to, no like all the recycling stuff. And that I just did that first video and all of a sudden that was like the best video, you know, traction had gotten. And I was like, oh, they like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. And then I just kept doing it. <laughs> yeah, because it's always the stuff that you're, like you just, it's so natural in your heart. Like it's the thing that you want to say in your heart that people resonate with the most. Yeah. It's like when you overthink it or you're like, gosh, are they going to get offended? Or maybe I'm being too this or that. Like the, yeah. I don't think that ever really hits with people creatively. Yeah. Because your, your intent is good. I, I think, think they see that. People yeah. know that. I've had so, a few, only, very few people say something vicious or oh, uh, offended or whatever. Those hateful little. What's the yeah. hardest thing you had to get used to as an American? abroad oh man well the thing is like germany does have um a lot of good benefits like there's enough reasons for me to stay over the things i don't like um but i think the probably the biggest thing i miss is coming from the south particularly is just like southern friendliness southern hospitality yeah. Yeah. like even just as soon as i get off the plane let's say if i fly in from munich to um, atlanta as soon as i'm off the plane the fr even like a tsa agent is like mm. How y'all doing? Yeah, you know, this yeah, way or whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, me? You're talking to me? <laughs> oh, you know, and the German will just like, they won't even look up. They, no. It's just so, it can be so cold and so dry. I know. I was just in it's New York warmth. City and I was getting into the cabs or in the Ubers and I was like, hi, what's going on? <laughs> And they're just like, oh, don't talk to me. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot I'm in New York. Because in <laughs> like, Austin. like, be cool, loser. <laughs> yeah, be fucking retard. Yeah, like, I, I've just, yeah, I was talking to everybody in New York City. Hi, y'all. How you doing? Because I'm yeah. so used to it. <laughs> like Southern Bell now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so true that Europeans aren't, they're not into the chit chat. They won't do it. No. And I mean, <clears throat> this was also hard for me the first few years was making friends. Oh, I like, can't, it's so hard. It's really tough. You have to really, like, grind against the stone. 
But I, I also, I talked about this in stand up too, is like Germans are like this steel shelled egg. Mm. So it's like, it takes a lot of work to get through there. And like, they will be standoffish and like, you know, they'll be kind and stuff, but like in your American mind, they'll be like kind of hard to get through. They, you know, they don't just open up immediately about things or mm -hmm. they take a long time to trust you with information and stuff about like, can they rely on you? It takes a long time to crack that egg. But when you finally do, it's just like everyone else, like this runny gooey. And then they're like your friends for life. Mm. Like this friend, Mark, I talked about who I showed the CD to. He was one of my very, very first friends. I think my first like eight months in Munich, I met him at a, in like some music open mic thing and he became my, my drummer and we're still friends today. And it's just because like, he was the only guy who was like kind of nice to me and I really worked on it <laughs> for like a year. And then it was like, boom. And now he like has stayed in my life. Even if we don't talk for a while, like he'll come back in contact and then we'll meet up and. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I think that's, yeah. It's, yeah, it was tough making friends. It, it is because the Europeans are a little so so like in Hungary, for instance, I always I have a pet peeve because culturally it makes me <clears throat> fucking insane when I hear like Tom on the phone with just a stranger like the credit card company or whomever. Yeah. Hi, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? And then they start the conversation and I'm like, oh, my God. Stop with this fucking, it's an empty formality because right. you're not really curious as to how that person is it's doing. It's just like saying hello. It's yeah. just that if this meaningless formality and because in Hungary, same thing, if you're to be like, hi, how are you? They're like, you really want Why to do know? Why do you want to know? Yeah, I tell you. I <laughs> Who mean, are you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I'm not your fucking friend. Right. So it's so insincere. It, ring, it reads as insincerity to me as well. Sure. How are you? I get it. How yeah, I see it now from the German's yeah. perspective. Like, oh, Americans are just so floaty and open. But yes. But then they disappear. Like, they just, yes. Yeah. That's you know? so true because. It's like, ah. Uh -huh. Yep. And the I'm Germans are friend. like, well, let's see where this goes. You know, I'm not going to give you my heart just yet smart you know? yeah it is it, yeah it's, it's harder for the american who actually wants to make the friends but then it's be way better long term and way more genuine way because yeah. i think i'm getting that way now in my older years because i've like when you when you make friends as an older person you're kind of like as an older person i'm 87 you're just like you know <laughs> you, you look amazing yeah i'm like what am i probably talking about that's in his 80s yeah, wow. yeah. <laughs> Um, you just, you know what you like and what your set of crazy is mm -hmm. and what crazy you can tolerate in mm -hmm. another person. So you know what I mean? Like I kind of like I yeah. interview folks now. I'm like, all right, what's your bag of bullshit? Yeah, you got the throne. <laughs> yeah, before. No, sorry. Not like that. Like in private life. Yeah, like like what's your what's your deal, man? Right, and then right. I kind of like to sniff out where what the the weird stuff is. And if I'm down with it, I'm down. We're gonna be friends. If not, I'm like, that's okay. We don't, yeah, we don't need yeah. To do it anymore. I think it's much easier as you get older to uh, to be okay with not needing someone's approval. They're not yeah. needing them to like care or like what you do or yeah. who you are or anything. And that's so freeing. So that's freeing. Really freeing. <laughs> yeah, and also the rain. It um, it's so cute because you're you're like, oh, it, you're walking around Tennessee and you're like, I'm noticing that it's raining and nobody's outside. <laughs> right. Running, <laughs> jumping, and the. <laughs> <laughs> I love like what? we were in, we were in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and I realized like pretty early on that. I mean, obviously, it's like not a lot of, you know, people walking around like on a normal street. But I just thought that would be so perfect for Johannes to notice that there's no one out on the street. <laughs> and he can make some comment about like, no, I don't see any cyclists ruining your day. No one's slowing down traffic. Because you know? they love because they will hike and do sports even in the rain. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Well, the most common, the most popular expression <laughs> I have ever come across in all of my time in Germany is translated there is no such thing as bad weather only bad clothing it's wild i mean i have had that said to me i have heard i have heard countless germans say that <laughs> to themselves to their friend i've heard it in like a you know like a like a walgreens type store like well there's no such thing as bad weather only bad clothing <laughs> 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 you know like I get, it's like so neurotic it drives me crazy you, you'll see people like like it's pissing rain yeah and they'll be out on their bike um you know running thing. errands like not even like they have to go maybe they don't even have to be out that day but they will do it on their bike not the car or take public transportation um but like you know the rainproof like helmet with the attachment and then like the rainproof bag and the poncho over and the, the gravel bags on their street bike and i, I just see them and i'm just like 
why? Oh, my question. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like why? Why? What is the why? necessity for this? Yeah, even the snow doesn't deter them. Like I, I no. saw a video where you were like, oh, are you afraid of the schnee? Yeah, Did yeah. You, were you late because of the schnee? Like it's like a, you <laughs> pussy. You're not out. You're not out playing. You're not a real in the German snow. if you're not laying out in the snow. Yeah, like oh, it's it's so really, tough. It's really really crazy to me uh, the sport the sport behavior is really it's like an addiction <laughs> it's it's really like an addiction yeah they like their sport it's like a self it's like you know what it is i think it's like if they punish themselves enough they won't be punished by anybody else for their past or something Maybe. it's like no 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 we have to stay busy so we just don't you know it's like a trauma response a collective yeah. trauma response maybe yeah. They're practicing yeah. to run away from the Krampus monster <laughs> or something. <laughs> that is a unique cultural thing, this this constant movement, this constant. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, I've had, um, like I've had friends who... But they're not as fat like, as us. They're not as nearly as no, fat. No, no, not at all. Thin. It's it it's very rare to see a fat person. Yeah. They, they, they exist, but it's very rare. And usually it's more like, um, there's a different kind of fat I've noticed in the yeah. area. Like, you know, older, fatter guys, it's usually, they're still making a lot of sport, but yeah. they have more of like just a beer gut. It's beer. There's no love handles. Like I've always been cursed with like insane love handles. Mm. And I'll see these guys who like from the back look like the trimmest, fittest <laughs> dudes in their like spandex cycling shirt. And I'm like, man, these guys got to be like 65. That's crazy. And he turns around and it's like, <laughs> this big like lump comes out. But still like, you know, if it's trim on the side, it kind of still looks it, yeah. decent. It looks kind of nice. That's that hard belly fat. The, the booze hard belly, belly fat. fat. The booze belly. That's what you die from. <laughs> yeah. That's the real hard one to get rid of. That's visceral fat, right? It's nuts. I mean, I know people who have like been caught, you know, they go hella skiing. They go to Canada they go hella skiing they've yeah. i've you know uh, my father-in-law's been caught in like two different avalanches oh my god continues to do it <laughs> like doesn't he's in his 60s he doesn't stop it's so crazy yeah i'm not a fan of the skiing i've seen um, no. enough videos on tiktok of like or just heard of people dying skiing they or... die all the time right it's so dangerous yeah it's so bananas that they're like you know what I'm going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I know Bill died last year, but yeah. I'm going to go do it exactly where he did it. Yeah. I mean, look, they'll go off trail. They'll think, oh like, my gosh. They'll go, like, I know people who will, you know, they have like these double black diamond crazy paths, which are hard enough, but mm. they will, hell, they'll like hella ski to uh, like the wild. Nah. And like do the whole brush thing, like to, <laughs> through the trees, like to find their way down. I'm like, this is not a documentary. I don't like it. This and is not for, you know. It's just cold and you're miserable and it's just not my jam. Then again, I like the ocean. You know, I, I'm an I, ocean guy. Maybe I'll get eaten by a shark or yeah. I'll step up with jellyfish. Fine. I'll probably drown, but at least yeah. I'll be happy. Yeah. <laughs> Sunburned and fat, you know, like yeah. it's okay. I will freeze to death. God, you know, it's, it's speaking of the ocean, like it's such a German thing too, to go to um, the Canary Islands in mm. January. <laughs> it's, it's a funny thing. I had heard about it forever. And then finally this year was the first year I did it. And me and a bunch of Germans went to the Canary Islands oh, and it's so nice and so warm. And I got tussled up by that ocean. Like, yeah, yeah. I got whipped around by that ocean. Oh, yeah. It was don't really. Don't fuck around. Yeah. You can't turn your back on her either. I, that's like the first thing I taught yeah. my children. Like, don't ever turn your back on that bitch because she will oh, it's, swat it's you over. down. Oh, it's relentless. Um, you know, they, yeah. the, 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 they teach you, or I don't know, the Germans were barking this at me, but like when the wave is coming <laughs> in, you're supposed to dive under it. Yeah. And I'm not a great swimmer anyway, so I was always staying close by the shore where I could stand. And it'd lift you a bit, but you could, I could still stand. And I remember one time, it was kind of funny. It got me and whipped me around, but I was out. It, it pushed me up instantly. And I was like, whoa. I had like this black sand, you know, everywhere. And I was Oof. like, oh my God, that was crazy. Whew. Anyway, and then like three hours later, my wife and a few friends were in the water and they're like, no, it's really calm now. You can really come in now. It's going to be okay now. And I, as soon as I got in, all of a sudden this big wave came up almost out of nowhere and I didn't see it. I was, I just kind of didn't catch it in time. And I, I didn't plan on swimming, swimming. Ugh. So I had my glasses with me. Oh, and was, shit. I grabbed them like this really fast and was like, oh, and it, it hit me so hard and uh. rocked my, rocked my world so hard that like I was kind of shaking after. Yeah. And the funny part was I finally got out and one of my German friends like grabbed my hand and pulled me up back to the shore. And then for 20 minutes, all of the Germans who had seen it from all different parts of the beach were like, you know, when the wave is coming, actually, you're supposed to jump under it and swim. Um, are you not such a good swimmer? Or I was like, I was shaking. I was like really breathing like, yeah. thank you. I've heard. 
<laughs> and they have to tell you. They all. They, I was ha- taught like I know, over. And I know this over. culture. I know what you're talking about. Like, you know, actually, uh, you have to do that. And you're like, yeah, I fucking know. Uh, I it's know. It's like some naked guy in the corner, like, oh, you did not uh, jump <laughs> under the. I must tell him, you know? <laughs> They like, all love to tell you what you should have done. What you should have done, yeah. And how real, you should do it. And everyone's what. a teacher. Yeah. Ugh, I know that. I know it. I know it. It's such a funny word. God, Hungarians do the same fucking thing. But Americans are like, whatever, dude. Do your own thing. Like, I don't give a shit. I, I miss I miss hearing whatever. I think that's also something I miss. Like, Germans have like, egal. Yeah. It's like E-G-A-L. But egal. it doesn't have the same ring to it. It's like, yeah. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. You know? What do you want for dinner? Oh, whatever. Whatever. Yeah. Egal. <laughs> Like the, oh no, my favorite. They're, 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 the Bavarian whatever is um, das ist mir Wurst, which is like, das ist th- that's for me a sausage. <laughs> I mean, Wurst. Yeah, Wurst, yeah. Wow. Like, da, like das ist mir, that, that is me sausage. Yeah, that's me sausage. <laughs> All right. Well, that is me sausage. Jordan Prince, you guys, you have to check him out on TikTok. He's at the Prince of Germany, right? Uh, TikTok is the Prince of Germany, Germany and Instagram is at Jordan Prince. Yeah. And he's on tour in Germany this October. If you happen to be there, Berlin, yeah, Berlin sold out. Amazing. The first show in Munich sold out. We added a new show, <laughs> and we have still a few tickets left in Hamburg. So yeah, get your tickets now. I love this for you, and congratulations on all your success. I Thank wish you. you much continued. Success. It's very fucking cool and very new and very niche, and I just couldn't be happier for you that you've carved out. It really out means this a lot thing. that you had me here. It's like so uh, surreal. <laughs> well, you'll have to come back on your mom's house next time you're in the states, It'd be and, awesome. and yeah, and let us know when you're doing arenas in <laughs> Germany and Austria and all these German speaking countries. <laughs> all right, guys, thank you so much. This is a very special where my mom's at. I, I just came back just for Jordan. That's how much I love him. So check him out. And that's it. All right. Until next time, stay cool, moms. Bye. Thank you. Hi, mommy. Thank you for watching that episode. Did you like what you see? I hope you did. So why don't you subscribe? Just click the subscribe button and, you know, hit the notification bell so you can get notified. And also, why don't you watch another video? What? Watch one of these. You know what I'm saying? Like right here, down there, whatever. There's so much stuff, bro. I make these all the time for you to watch. That's why I'm here. I love you.